Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another video at my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some new products from Prima. These are all brand new watercolor products and they were sent to me by Prima for review. As usual, I'm going to be sharing with you my honest opinions, whether they were sent to me for review or if I personally purchase them. I always want to make sure that I give you guys my first impression of products and make sure you know that everything I say would be the same whether I bought them myself or if a, a company sends them to me. So the first thing I'm going to go over are these half pan sets. Prima calls these watercolor confections, which is super cute because as you can see, when you open up the tin, all of the watercolors are double wrapped inside like little candies. I thought that was really cute. It's kind of a fun way to have your watercolors. A lot of other companies package their pan sets like this as well. I know for example, Schmincke, I have a set of Schmincke watercolors and they were packaged exactly the same. In fact, the tin that the these watercolor confections come in is very similar to the Schmincke palette that I have, which is a really nice palette. So. I was familiar with that. Um, as you take each pan out, a way that you can do that a little bit more easily is to bend the little tabs up at the very top. Um, you can bend them back and then take out the pan and then go through and bend it back into place after you've put the pan in and that allows you to get them in and out really easily. Each color has a number on the back. I had really hoped that there would be names just so it would be a little bit easier to differentiate between colors between the palettes but the numbers work just as efficiently and if you wanted to you could take a sharpie marker or any other permanent marker and put the number on the back of each color. I ended up not doing that, I considered it, but I didn't do that because later I made sort of like a swatch map and I'll walk you through that when we get there. Another reason why you would want to keep track of the numbers of these pans is because there are rumors, I don't have no idea if this is true or not, but um, I've heard from multiple sources that Prima will be releasing these pan watercolors in, as individual pans. So if you wanted to replace a color that you've used or maybe one fell out and broke or something like that, for whatever reason, you could replace individual colors within the sets, which I think is a really great idea because other watercolor companies offer that as well. And on the same hand, you could create sort of your own like customized personal set of your favorite colors that you use all the time. The watercolors do shift around a little bit inside the tin. If you have your colors in the exact order where you want them, you could put a little bit of glue underneath each pan and set that in place so they won't move around at all. I'm keeping mine loose just in case I want to replace them later or things like that. The tin itself has two kind of leaf panels, the top and then this other one, and they have different sizes of wells in each one, so it's great for mixing colors, or um, you could use the bigger wells if you're gonna do a large wash of color. Um, you could use both sides like that. I would just make sure that both of those are dry before I close up the set and store it away, just so that it keeps the, all of the colors inside nice and dry and gives them a chance to dry out before storage. Prima has also released three new water brushes, and these are sort of like flat tip brushes. One is very narrow, and then the other is a little bit larger than that, and the last one is even larger. So there's a small, medium, and large brush tip for these. These are really great for larger washes or just larger areas. Prima has a couple of other water brushes that came out with a while back that I actually really love. So I was excited to get these. I did want to mention that when you're putting the caps on these when they're dry, it's a little bit more difficult. But for the most part, I think you'll only be putting the cap back on after use. So they, these would be wet normally. But for now, I'm just showing you how it is to put the caps on when they're dry. One of the other products that everyone's really curious about from Prima is their new watercolor coloring book. This is particularly exciting for those of us who love coloring and coloring books and have attempted to watercolor in them. Any coloring book that is not specifically for watercolor can't really handle all of the water that you would use with watercolor pencils, 
watercolor crayons or traditional watercolors. So it's a little bit frustrating um, or has been frustrating until now when some companies are coming out with these watercolor coloring books. So I was really excited to try this out because um, the, one of the things that's really held me back from watercoloring and coloring books is the fact that they weren't on really nice thick paper. So this one is actually on the Prima watercolor paper and it's cut to eight by 10. So I think their idea behind this was that you could um, watercolor some of these quotes or designs and then since they're already 8x10 you can put them into an 8x10 frame and put it up in your home as sort of DIY home decor. So it's kind of a fun idea. The other thing that's really interesting about this um, whole watercoloring coloring book is that all of these quotes have outlined letters. So the opportunity for coloring in the letters and multiple color washes or even just filling it in with one color is really endless. There's lots of different things you can do with this uh, watercolor coloring book. There are 24 different designs and they're all one-sided so you don't have to choose you know, between uh, designs on either side of the page. You can do every single design and not have to worry about it. These are gummed at the very top so you can just tear them out and without any damage to the paper. So now I'm gonna go into how I created my swatches for the watercolor pan sets. And my idea behind this was that I wanted to be able to take a little panel of watercolor paper and store it inside the tin with the watercolor so that they, I always have those as a reference. Because as you know, um, watercolors in the pan or even um, squeezed up from a tube, the color doesn't always look the same as when it's dried on watercolor paper. So I wanted to make sure I had a good reference for what these colors looked like. So I've cut out three watercolor rectangles. This is out of Arches cold press watercolor paper. I picked that watercolor paper just because it's what I had on hand. And I cut them to four and a quarter wide by two and one quarter tall. And then I made horizontal lines at one inch from the top and bottom. And then I divided it into six equal sections across the length. So in order to keep these watercolor sets uh, kind of organized even more, I took some blue masking tape and I wrote on them uh, what each set was and then just placed that on the top lid of each set. This just helps me know which set is which. So I also labeled the watercolor papers, this the swatch maps, and I'm gonna go to town coloring these in. So as I was unwrapping the colors in each tin, I made sure to place them back into the tin in the numerical order um, determined on the numbers on the back of the pan sets. I did this because I wanted to make sure that I had all the colors in the right order and so that when I did this little swatch map, I'd be able to label them, you know, like one through 12 for the classics or 13 through 24 for the tropicals and so on. And doing my swatches like this will really help me in the future, just in case I do want to um, add some additional uh, colors in or if I need to replace them when Prima hopefully comes out with the individual pan sets. So these uh, different sets of colors are actually really interesting. The classic set, which is numbers one through 12, has your very traditional kind of, you know, rainbow colors across the board, which are really nice. And then you get into tropicals, which I think would be more useful for, for like florals. And then the last set is decadent pies. And there's a silver and a gold and kind of like a shimmery one as well. Um, this set also has some really great colors for skin tones or even like coloring critters or things like that, more earth tones, which I really, really like. So what I wanted to mention about these colors is that re-wetting them is really, really easy. Just a little bit of a damp brush and you get quite a bit of color. It's really nice. Um, they do have a creamy consistency, but then also just a slight, like very slight chalkiness. Um, it's not such a chalky feeling that it would deter me from using them, but I did want to mention that I did have that. The pigmentation is really, really high on these. Um, if there's anything that I would love for them to improve on would be the transparency. 
Um, with watercolor sets and watercolors in general, I always want to have a really high transparency. And with some of these colors, they're more semi-transparent or maybe even opaque. And so they're in that way, I would say that they're um, more similar to a student grade watercolor because of that. As far as price goes, each one of these sets costs $25 retail. And that price is actually really, really good for what you get. I did a little bit of research and looked up some other watercolor sets, particularly um, student or scholastic grade watercolor sets. And um, for example, Grumbacher has a 12 pan set that's around 25 to $30. The half pan set of Windsor and Newton Cotman watercolors for 12 colors is $30 retail. And a, it's kind of across the board. If you want a more student or scholastic grade watercolor set, they're around $25 to $30 for 12 colors. That's, uh, the, that's the price retail. Of course, you could find it um, on sale or use a coupon in a store, things like that. But I think the pricing is just about right. Um, if you were to go to more of a professional or artist grade watercolor set, um, which is actually what I'm more used to nowadays because I've been kind of almost collecting them, um, you're paying upwards of more like $85 to $150 just for 12 colors. So if you are just starting out with watercoloring or you're looking for a really good beginner set of watercolors, the price point on these is actually fairly good. Um, I, I'd probably recommend this set if you were looking for um, these particular colors. Um, a lot of the sets that I recommend to uh, my viewers quite a bit are all around that same price point. Some uh, you can get a few more colors or a few less, but they're all about the same. So it really just depends on what you want. The things that I really love about this set, maybe over other sets, is that the tin that it comes in is particularly nice with those different wells. And I like how small and compact it is. I think that's a great um, positive or pro for these particular watercolor sets. I wanted to try out the watercolors doing some brush lettering. So you just saw before I was uh, testing out all the different colors and writing out the color names. And now I am brush lettering a quote from Matisse. I just wanted to see how these colors would kind of blend on a water brush, um, get a little better feel for them. Um, as you notice that the, the colors don't really blend too much, but I think that's because I wasn't using a whole lot of water. Um, the water to pigment ratio on this was um, a whole lot more pigment than water. So that's why these are a little bit more thick. So now I'm going to go into the coloring book and show you some of the coloring in it and give you my opinion on the coloring book. So I'm going to go through some pros and cons and I had to write these down because I wanted to make sure that I covered everything. So um, pros. The biggest pro for me is that it's actually on watercolor paper. Um, it can handle a lot more water than other coloring books. I think that has a really... Um, that's a really good pro for the coloring book itself. Um, I also like that it's eight by 10 size. It's nice and big, but it's not overly large like some of the artist watercoloring books that I've used in the past. Um, those books weren't watercolor specific, but um, the format was much larger than eight by 10 and it was a little bit cumbersome to use, especially if I was going to be traveling with it or kind of just coloring on the go. So the eight by 10 size is something that I really, really like. Um, the designs inside are nice. There's a good variety of kind of florals and type and just nice quotes the, uh, to work with, things like that. Um, I did want to mention when it comes to the typography on this that um, I found a lot of the letters to be very small. And when I painted them, I, I painted, you know, three or four of these sheets, not finished, but just to test them out. And I, it was really hard to get a nice, crisp, clean edge on all of those words. It was, they're particularly small and kind of hard to paint. So, um, I think what I'm going to do in the, in the future, and I would recommend this to you guys, if you find that to be the case for you as well, is I'm going to just take a black, really thin lined marker and fill in those words. So it kind of makes that black outline disappear. It looks like it's printed, or maybe I've done the brush lettering in black on top. 
think that's a really great way to work with um, the different typography that's on these quotes. So um, I'll probably be doing that in the future. And particularly, I'll be using a black waterproof marker or a pen to do that so that I can do watercolor washes over the top. As far as cons of the coloring book go, um, it, it's funny to say this again because it was on my pro, but the paper in the coloring book, um, it's on my pro and con list because um, it's actually not my favorite. I, I'm not a big fan of the Prima watercolor paper. I think that really stems from the fact that I've used other types of watercolor paper more than Prima. So I'm very used to how my watercolor pigments behave on those particular types of watercolor paper. Uh, so it's really just kind of like one of those your mileage may vary type situations where if you're used to using other high quality papers, um, you might be a little bit frustrated with the watercolor paper in the Prima coloring book, but it's that's really like a, um, I don't think that should really deter you away from getting the coloring book because the designs are really nice. I particularly love this floral one right here. And of all the pages that I watercolored, this is the one that I'm going to finish and probably put up in my craft room or something like that because I really like how it's um, starting to take form. So the paper was a little bit of a, a pro and con for me. Um, I also wanted to mention that some of the designs can be really small. Um, that's one of my major complaints with other coloring books is that the designs uh, don't have enough open space for you to really kind of get some blended color. So um, this design in particular had some more medium type size things which was great for getting those colors on the flowers and on the leaves but some of the other designs have really really small elements which could be difficult to do with a watercolor set. Um, I also wanted to mention when it comes to the paper one of the reasons why I didn't like the paper was because the drying time is really really fast so I didn't feel like it was forgiving. Um, I wasn't able to put down a wash of color and drop in more colors. Um, I was really limited in that case. So that is my review of all of the Prima products that they sent me. Um, all in all, I would recommend the watercolor set. Um, if I was to give you a recommendation on which set to buy first, I might say get the classics because you can mix a lot of those colors to be similar to the colors in the other sets. Um, but if you like florals, maybe you like the tropicals more. Or if you really like to paint people or kind of um, animals, you might go for that uh, decadent pie set. It's really up to you. The coloring book, even though I don't like the paper, I'd still recommend it just because the designs are fun and it's kind of hard to find a watercolor specific coloring book out there right now. So this is a fun way to kind of test things out. I did um, try out a couple of different watercolors um, in the coloring book. Specifically, I tried my Windsor & Newton watercolors. I tried uh, Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I tried some Tombos. All of them had about the same experience with the watercolor paper in that it was uh, drying very quickly and it was a little bit hard to blend color. So I think it's across the board it's like that. It's just the type of paper. Um, but like I said before, I, please don't let that deter you from buying it because I think the designs are really great. So thanks for watching. I will catch you guys in the next video. Until then, happy crafting and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.